Uh, back to Westminster and UK politics. Joining me are our city editor and also our senior political correspondent, uh, Beth Rigby. Well, Beth, first of all, let's talk about the, the overnight news. This uh, by-election we weren't expecting with the uh, resignation of a relatively young Labour MP. Yeah, Jamie Reid quitting to go and get a job in the private sector and it's probably the Copeland by-election is one of the worst possible places that Jeremy Corbyn has to fight a seat and that's because it's a big leave area. Uh, so 62% of the constituents there wanted to leave the EU so that's a big test for him on his EU policy. Uh, it's got a big nuclear industry there and of course what's his position on Trident so, and, and nuclear energy so that's an issue. And then lastly I think it could really open the can of worms over Labour's difficulties over immigration policy where those London MPs who are very pro-immigration and don't want to cap numbers or set any parameters on immigration are coming up against those MPs in Northern Heartlands who are very nervous about the UKIP fox uh, in their midst and so there's a lot of things going on in this election it's going to be closely watched and Jeremy Corbyn is in actually quite danger of losing that seat. Okay we don't know where it's going to be yet though, the by-election. We don't know when it's going to be and I checked in with Labour and they're no closer to actually saying okay. who it will be. And, and Beth uh, as far as uh, names in the frame one name people are conjuring with, uh, possibly for Copeland, the man, uh, one tweet said the only person who could hold it for Labour is Ed Balls. We're dancing around Ed Balls, aren't we? Is My it... dancing partner, if I wish, yeah, now he's, he's so skilled now. Um, there are rumours that Ed Balls is planning a return uh, to, number, uh, to, to, to Parliament next year and I spoke to a Labour source yesterday who said that they would be very surprised if Ed Balls is not back in Parliament next year. Uh, when it comes to Copeland, not that an attractive seat because it could be very difficult to win and also it's going to be affected by boundary changes. But Adam, I think there's a bigger picture in that. When MPs and sources are talking about him potentially coming back, what it suggests is there are a number of MPs who are planning to step down as Labour MPs. They might have a better job offer in the private sector and that is very unusual in an, op an opposition government. basically despondent about Jeremy exactly, Corbyn. Exactly, but as you and I know, that typically happens when so a party has been in government for a long time and MPs can see the writing on the wall that they're going to be out of power and then they start leaving Parliament. To have that happening uh, when you're the opposition yeah. That is bad news. Also, as we said, uh, if the by-election, as we expect, is early in the uh, new year, that will clash with Ed Balls' yeah. Strictly, Strictly so, Tour. So. Uh, well, I hope he will be doing a rumba, because we never quite got there, did right. we? OK. This is All Out Politics, and now for The View, looking at the opinion pages of the newspapers. And... Uh, in the world of politics, uh, many lick, lips are being licked at the unexpected by-election in Cumbria we were just talking about, caused by uh, the resignation of the Corbyn basher, Jamie Reid. Uh, it's uh, manner for the cartoonist, Adams in the Telegraph, has Mr Reid walking out of a rather battered Labour HQ towards his new employer, Sellafield, declaring, that's it, I'm going to work somewhere less toxic. Uh, and in The Guardian, Steve Bell has uh, long taking a dim view of nuclear power, uh, portraying it there as a white elephant uh, with uh, Mr uh, Reid peering out of the back. Uh, the fact is I need to spend more time uh, with my white elephant, it says. The Mirror uh, says the by-election is an explosive test for Jez uh, and warns that Jeremy Corbyn simply must win. So, uh, joining me are Tom Newton Dunn the Sun and Lucy Fisher of The Times. Are you uh, licking your lips at the prospect of this by-election? I am, actually. I think it's going to be a little bit more exciting than recent, uh, well, certainly maybe not Richmond Park, but Sleaford and North Highcombe was such a safe Conservative seat. This, it really looks like it's going to be in the balance. There's 2,500 votes in it, um, and it would be a pretty big deal if the government won, uh, because I think 1982 was the last time uh, a governing party took a seat off uh, the main opposition at a by-election. I mean, older viewers will remember Copeland was famously the seat of... Uh, the veteran uh, right-wing Labour fixer, John Cunningham. Mm. I would be... Um, I'm slightly sort of further down the line than Lucy on this, perhaps, in that I think this is now for the governments to lose. Uh, this should be a Tory gain. 
Uh, if you look at the way, uh, for example, Copeland's majorities, Labour majorities, are going down from Jack Cunningham's days, he had around 10,000 or so. Jamie Reid had about 2,500 in 2015, and that was when Ed Miliband had, what was it, a five, six point gap behind Cameron? Corbyn is now 17 to 20 points behind May. So, on paper, this should be a Tory take, which in itself would be an enormous story. But you play then into the, the mathematics and all that, and suddenly Corbyn looks like the underdog. So maybe the take well, turn I mean, again. If you make that assumption, I mean, do you think this could turn into a make or break for Jeremy Corbyn? No, I think it's a bit too early. He has only just been re-elected only a few months ago by a massive mandate of Labour Party uh, members. But what I think it could be the start of is the beginning of the end, because the Labour moderates, and they've tried how long now, you know, a year and a half to try and get Corbyn out or to, to destroy the Corbyn phenomenon, and they've failed at every single way they've done it. The only way they've come to the conclusion of doing it now is to exposing him in front of the actual voters, the one that really matters, and the people who decide who governs the country. So by elections like this, one after the other after the other. And I don't think Jamie Reid will be the last, either on purpose or part of a plot or just because people want to go. Are there a way of proving that his time will be up? And Lucy, the, the sort of two big local, local issues cut to the divisions in Labour in different mm -hmm. ways. On the one hand, uh, this is a constituency that voted for Brexit, although Jamie Reid was a Remainer. On the other hand, it's uh, more than 90% white and is worried about immigration. That's absolutely right. I mean, it's, it does expo expose the fault lines in Labour. Labour's going to have to come up with a position here on immigration and on Brexit. It doesn't help Labour that next door seat uh, or nearby seat is Tim Farron. A lot of Lib Dem voters can quite easily flood this seat uh, and, uh, and quite possibly sweep up Remain voters. So I think Labour's left in, in quite a tricky position. But also, as well as Brexit and immigration, you've got the nuclear issue. Um, which Jeremy Corbyn, you know, being sort of very against um, nuclear weapons in another no ne next door seat, Barrow, sort of very lukewarm on nuclear power. It's, um, it's going to be tough. Any, any idea of candidates who's going to stand? Well, just down the coastline from uh, Copeland is a place called Blackpool, the home of Strictly Come Dancing. So we all had a, just probably a little bit too much fun yesterday thinking, well, who is the one major big Labour name who might even have a following in the North West already? It's Ed Balls. And it would, it would be the most tremendous politics and fun for us in a sort of a cold February while we're waiting for Theresa May to trigger Article 50 on Brexit to have Ed Balls run again. I think it's probably unlikely simply because it's too much of a risk for him to run and lose. He will then find it incredibly hard to come back again. But boy, it would uh, brighten up February, wouldn't it?